Welcome back to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. The segment bar is annoying me that it's not centered, so I'm just going to fix that real quick. I was thinking about that the entire time I was signing off from that first segment. Anyways, uh, I get sidetracked. You guys should probably know that by now if you've been paying attention to (laughs) these podcasts, uh, you know, uh, consistently. But anyways... Evgeny Kuznetsov is a huge, huge. I mean, this is this this was a shock. This came kind of out of nowhere for me. I mean, uh, for for a player of Evgeny Kuznetsov caliber, I mean, you just look at his career totals. Um, in 743 games played, 723 of those being with Washington, um, 173 goals. 402 assists, 575 career points, so almost a point per game player, like a point eight points per game player. Uh, he's a career plus 38. Has been, uh, you know, top 30 in Selkie voting in 2015-2016 in his third year in the league, and his year when he was 23 years old. He was an all-star. He was a Lady Bing and a uh, heart candidate. This guy, this guy had a fantastic career in the NHL. Is it a Hall of Fame worthy career? Probably not. He does have a Stanley Cup in 2018, of course, in his fifth or sixth year, fifth year in the league. Um, that year was, I mean, it was pretty impressive. Had the most goals in a single season in, in his career that year: 27 goals, 56 assists for 83 points, most highest point total also in his career that season uh in only 79 games Evgeny Kuznetsov has been you know a very very important piece for the Washington Capitals throughout Ovechkin's later latter half of his career on the power play um it when he was you know playing consistently in Washington it he played fantastic on the power play getting 20 power play points in uh 2016 getting uh 14 31 23 12 power play points uh throughout his career 27 in 2021 2022 he had i mean this guy was this guy was an all-star when he was you know on but now he's gonna be going to um now he's going to be going to the KHL, uh, where you know he is Russian. He came from the KHL. He just uh, isn't feeling it in the NHL anymore. He went into the player assistance program uh, about midway through, or uh, on the earlier half of last year when he was in Washington. Got traded to Ca- Carolina, helped them out a good amount on their playoff run, and is now uh, going back to the KHL. So where does that leave Carolina? Is what I'm kind of interested in. When you look at their lines. Uh, now, Evgeny Kuznetsov was kind of, I mean, right now he's like locked into their second line center spot and now you're not going to have him there. So that just means that players like Jordan Stahl are going to be needed to be relied on. Uh, Jack Rosovich might be that second line center and that would be disgusting. This is another loss for the Carolina Hurricanes from last season. We talk about their mass exodus, six guys that played big roles on their team last year left the team and now a seventh i uh, table terrifying and now i'm getting kuznetsov brady shea brett pesci stefan nesson jake gensel these guys are big pieces for what carolina was building last year and first off that team only got to the second round and then they lose six guys replace them with uh non-replaceable play like you replace non-replaceable players with you know way worse players Jack Roslovich, uh, William Carrier, it it's not great. Uh, you're still ho- like Seth Jarvis and Martin Nietzsche still haven't signed contracts either. Uh, Carolina has a lot of cap space, I'm pretty sure. Um, so they're not. Re- I mean, they only have six million dollars in cap space. Sorry, I I thought that they had way more. Uh, it's it's a little. It's a little scary in Carolina right now. I keep talking about how much they're going to regress from last year. And, you know, the team was fantastic last year. It was a top, um, it was, it was like a top four or five team in all of the NHL. But now it's so, it's so far gone from what it was that now we're, you're looking at the Carolina Hurricanes and saying, well, crap, this, this team (laughs) <laughs> this team's going to lose a lot of games next season. This team's going to lose a lot more games than they lost last year. I, I could promise you that. I could guarantee you that. 
And, and what does that look like? Is that... Does that mean that this team is falling out of the playoffs? When I was giving you guys my season preview on... Did I do that on Friday or was that Wednesday? Um, nonetheless, when I was giving you guys my season preview, I said that this team is... It, it, it scares me. I still have them in a playoff spot right now, but I have that, that fourth spot in the uh, in the Metro. And I have it being 4-4 four and four split in the Eastern Conference with who gets playoff spots. Now, with them, you know, with the team losing, with the team losing as much as they did, and Evgeny Kuznetsov, who, I mean, was going to be a top six player for them, was going to play a big role in the in, in this season for this team, it looks, it, it does just look very scary for Carolina. And I... I have them now missing a playoff spot because you can't replace guys like this. Jack Rosovich cannot be a second line winger. He needs to be on a serious team, a bottom six player, and firmly a bottom six player. I've I've learned that firsthand. Uh, you know, watching him in Columbus, he just was not uh, was not up to the caliber that you would want him to be. So Carolina scares me a lot, and you know, it's just unfortunate because I mean, what are you gonna do about it? You know, Evgeny Kuznetsov just. He just he just didn't want to play in the NHL, and I mean you can't do anything about that. Um, in the article that I read today, uh, he it, it's reported that he signed a four year contract with uh, SKA Saint Pet- Petersburg, which I think is the team that SKA I think is the team that one big one big Russian prospect played for. I don't know if it if it was even Ivan Murashenko. If it was Yeager Chinnikov or if it was um, if it was Matt Mitchkov, but I do know uh, a big prospect that from the last few years was on this team, and of course is now not now in the NHL. But that is the team that he's going to a four year contract and foregoing the final year on his contract with the Carolina Hurricanes. I mean, this just it does leave it it does leave a hole in Carolina. Um, he was dealt at the deadline, so, I mean, wasn't really relied on too much in Carolina to make an impact, but he was one of the only ones that stayed after the what I keep saying, a mass exodus uh, for Carolina this season, and now they didn't they they don't stay so Evgeny Kuznetsov is retiring from the NHL there's nothing you can do about that if you're the Carolina Hurricanes you can't really replace him at this point because well you made your offseason moves you only have six million dollars in cash space you need to re-sign two big RFAs that I mean Seth Jarvis is not going to want that much but he he will want a bridge contract and Martin Eichas I think has made it clear that he he knows what he's worth he um he wants kind of a big contract if he's going to stay in Carolina made a big fuss about staying in Carolina so we'll see what that looks like um it was it, it was 3 point it is 3.9 million dollars that is coming off the books for Carolina um I don't know if that is still on there let's see if it's still counted against them and it is still counted against them in uh at least the website I'm looking at so you know, now you have now you have nine million dollars, so it does make it a little bit better. That puts them kind of on par with how much money the Kings have, how much money the Canadians have. Uh, the Kings did just have a big re-signing earlier this earlier today with a uh, Quinn Byfield five years by five point seven five million dollars, I believe, or five point five years by five point two five million dollars. It came out to be thirty one point two five total. So the Kings the Kings got their guy back. Uh, just wanted to wanted to share that that i saw that i think it was frank Savarli, cerevelli that uh had that first reported i think that's where i saw it from on twitter but anyways uh yeah evgeny kuznetsov is not in the nhl anymore it's weird it, it just is weird uh the, this guy i i've been watching you know for the last 10 years of my of my life and it, you know he's on the washington capitals growing up a blue jackets fan i did watch it watch the Blue Jackets play the Capitals a lot. So him not being in the NHL, going back to the KHL, that's a, that's a, a while, well, I'm getting a little bit older moment for me. But anyways, that'll wrap it up for the second segment of the night time about Evgeny Kuznetsov retiring from the NHL. When I come back from my second break of the night, we'll be talking about teams still set to make a big move, what we're looking at with cap space, what, or some players that are still left to, uh, st- still some uh, trade requests that are still left to fulfill.
Looking for your